Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the calculation series. In this episode, we're going to start our journey into using the optional method for a single family or one family dwelling. Now, it also applies to the individual dwelling units of a two family dwelling, as well as the individual dwelling units of a multifamily building. Now, don't get it confused with 220.84 when we're doing the service for a building that might have three or more dwelling units in it. We're not doing, we're only talking about sizing individual dwelling units using the optional method here or individual single family or one family dwellings using the optional. Now, the optional method is probably the method you're going to use the most. Standard method, which we covered in another video series, you need to know that for electrical exams and you need to know that when you're sizing the neutral. But when it comes to most of the calculations that we do for dwellings and things like that, we use the optional method. Okay, it just results in a smaller service, smaller conductors, and it's permitted by the National Electrical Code. So we're going to be examining Article 220, Part 4 today. We've already covered Part 3. This is Step 1. We're going to get into that right now. But before that, I want to show you what our form looks like. We have these forms that make it a little easier for you to work through the calculations. So I want you to see them. They're available on our website for download but I want you to see what they are. So here's the form. It's pretty straightforward. On today's lesson, we're going to be covering one, two, and three uh, for step one. And it looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? Because again, it still uses 1500 VA per small appliance brand circuit, still uses 1500 VA for the laundry circuit. Okay. Um, it's still going to use the, the outside dimensions. You're going to exclude things like open porches, garages, and unused or unfinished spaces that are not adaptable for future use. But of course, all that assumes that you watched our standard method video. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you're new to this series and you want to get it. So we're going to jump right into it, but that's what we're going to tackle today. So I just wanted to make sure we, we covered that. Now, let's look at the code also real quick. So this is where we're at in the National Electrical Code. Obviously, this is part four, and it's broken down into an A, a B, and a C. A gives you your general information. It tells you what this is applicable. In other words, this, you can use this optional method. If your service is over 100 amps or greater, then you can use the optional method. So if you're doing a feeder to an individual dwelling unit in a multifamily building and you want to use the optional method, if the load calculation comes out to being less than 100 amps, then you can't use the optional method. You'd have to use a standard method. However, if it's three or more dwellings, then you're probably going to use the allowance in 220.84 anyway. So again, just wanted to, to show you how you would do this. But it has to be at least a 120, 240 volt system or a 208 wire 120 volt system, which is a three wire service or feeder. Uh, and the amp capacity has to be 100 amps or greater. And you can use this method for sizing the service or the feeder, and you can do so instead of using part three, okay? Now, how you're gonna do this is you're going to apply all of the things that are in 220.82B, and then you're gonna do all the things that are in 220.82C, but things that are in B, you're gonna be able to apply demand factors. The first 10,000 at 100%, and the remaining at 40%, okay? Pretty straightforward, pretty hefty demand factor. And then when it comes to 220.82C, you're just gonna choose which is larger, the AC or the heat, and you're gonna run with it, okay? So it's much simpler to do the optional method than it is the standard method. The reason we teach the standard method is because when you're sizing a neutral, as you can see right there in the last line of 220.82a, it tells you that the optional method, you are permitted to size the neutral loads based on 220.61. Well, 220.61 is not located in part four. It's actually located in part three, which is the standard method. So you have to know how to do the standard method in many cases to size the neutral load. Now, there is exceptions to that rule, if you will. If you're using 310.12, which is the 83% rule, then you can size your neutral based on that, okay? But at the end of the day, it still has to handle the maximum unbalanced load, so it means you have to do a calculation, okay? So we're gonna go through that so that you know how to do it. And if you've watched part three, then I guess when we get to that one, you could probably skip it because it's the same dwelling, but I know you're glutton for punishment, so you definitely wanna watch how we do it again. 
All right, so this is what we're going to work through, and we're going to work through each little piece of it. Now, real quick, I want to examine each one in uh, 220.82b real quick so that you get a feel for what is different. All right, so if you look at it, one thing you'll notice here, and I'll scroll up a little bit, is that you're still going to be 3 VA per square foot, and that's going to cover the general lighting and general use receptacles, okay? Again, any open porches, garages, and unfinished or unused spaces that are not adaptable for future use, you're going to subtract away from your square footage. So the square footage is the outside dimensions of the dwelling, okay? Length and width. Those are your dimensions, and you multiply the length times the width. But if you have any of the spaces that that encompasses open porches or garages, then you want to subtract that away. And we're going to do that in our example, but I need you to be aware of that. And all that's covered right here. Now, the other neat thing about the optional method is you got to do a bit of a mental gymnastics when you're doing part three in the standard method. When it comes to the optional method, it's all right here. Pretty straightforward, cut and dry. All right, now here's where we get the permission to do the first 10 1,000 VA at 100%, and then the remainder at 40%. That's pretty hefty, because you remember in the standard method, we got appliances, we were able to get 75% if we had four or more. Um, we got to apply the demand factors for the general lighting and general use receptacles. Again, the first 3,000 at 100%, the next 117,000 at 35%, and the value over 120 at 25%. Well, we didn't got to do none of that here, okay? Also, when it comes to ranges, Clothes dryers, water heaters, other fixed in place appliances, guess what? We just take the nameplate. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you get to C, and that's heating and air conditioning, and we take the larger. And then we take the values that we calculate under 220.82B, and we take the values that we calculate under 220.82C, uh, we add them together, and we rock and roll. That's how we do it when we're doing an individual dwelling unit using the optional method. Okay, makes sense? All right, so let's get into the presentation so we can kind of work through this thing and, and, and get it knocked out of the way. All right, so here we're at our dwelling, probably familiar dwelling if you were in the, uh, the series where we did the standard method. Where do we start? Like any calculation for a service, we have to know what's going in the dwelling. We need to know what the appliances are. Right? We need to know how many small appliance brand circuits are going to have. We need to know how many laundry circuits are going to have. Um, we need to know the outside dimensions. We need to know what to be excluded. Like, do they have open porches? Do they have garages? Do they have an attic space that is not adaptable for future use? And we don't want to count that in our square footage. We got to know all these things. You're the electrician. You need to compile this information. You can go to the general contractor. You can go to the owner. Um, you need to know also because you're going to be running branch circuits to lots of different appliances and pieces of equipment, and you need to know what those are. So take the time to get that information. It's going to be very important in your calculation. All right, so here's our calculation as we've used before in other videos, keeping it consistent. We have an outside dimensions on this dwelling of 35 by 55. We have a front porch, which has a... Uh, an area that is included in that 35 by 55, but as you saw, we got to take that away, and we'll cover all that. And then we got small appliance brand circuits. We got four of them in this building. Now, remember, the code only requires two, but if you put more than two in, you're going to have to account for them. They do have a VA value, a volt ampere value. And, of course, the laundry brand circuit, we need a minimum of one, However, if you put two in, like in our example, then you have to account for both of those, okay? So that's all we're going to do in today's video. We're not going to get into the appliances, the cooking, and the air conditioning and heat in this episode, but we want to make sure we get that first step in our process, okay? So we're going to get into that. All right, first thing we're going to do is we know the dimensions. We got that, 35 by 55. We also know that there's an open porch, and we need to subtract that away. And that's 7 by 10. Okay, so 7 times 10 is 70. 35 by 55 is 1,925. We take that 1,925, we take the 70 away from it. It's 1,855. Now, remember what it said in Part B of 220.82? It says use 3 VA per square feet, just like we did in the standard method. No different. It's still 3 VA per square foot. So we take that 1,855. 
We multiply that pi 3 VA, and that gives us 5,000 565 VA. Now that's our general lighting and our general use receptacle loads to this point, okay? So we've got that part of it covered. Now let's write that number down and we'll move on to the small appliance. So when doing the small appliance like you saw in the code and hopefully you have your code book and you're looking at it and if you've got your code book over in 220.82B, we're actually now at B2. And we know that 210.11C1 requires that we have at least two small appliance brand circuits. Now, in our case, we got more than two. We've got four. So each one of those small appliance brand circuits is 1,500 VA. So since we've got four of them, we have to do four times 1,500. So in our case, it's 6,000 VA. So our small appliance brand circuit load that we're going to add to our math is 6,000 VA, okay? And then our laundry. If you look at 220.82B2, same one as the small appliance brand circuits, it tells us 1,500 VA for the laundry brand circuit. Well, we've got two of them, okay? You have to have at least one. Now, in a multifamily building where you have a whole bunch of dwelling units, they could have a laundry facility on site. And if that's the case and it's available to everybody, then you would not have to have that neutral load and you would not have to calculate that in. In this case, we're doing individual dwelling unit and we're assuming that it does have a laundry circuit in there. But in future videos, when we do a multifamily dwelling, that's three or more, you might find that we have an actual separate laundry facility on site that's available to everyone. And if that was the case, then we would not need to calculate the laundry circuit in our load calculation. Why? Because there's one on site. And as long as it's available to everybody, then we don't have to calculate that in. But one caveat, they might put that laundry circuit on site. But if they do insist in the drawings that they have a laundry circuit that goes to that individual dwelling unit, even if they were using 220.84, you're still going to have to count for that laundry circuit. I'm just saying. Okay. Now, our case, we're doing an individual dwelling unit calculation or single family dwelling calculation with the, with the, with the laundry circuit, we're going to have to account for 1,500 VA per laundry circuit. We've got two. So it's two times 1,500 VA. That's 3,000. Don't worry. If all of that about the separate laundry facility and all that confused you, trust me. We're going to cover that in our video series where we talk about multifamily dwellings. Don't worry. Easy peasy. Easy to learn. Okay. So there you go. That's our 3,000 contribution. Now, here's what we'd have. We need to compile these loads. So we've got 5,565. That was our general lighting and general use receptacles. We have the small appliance brand circuit. That was 6,000. Remember, we had four of them. We have the laundry circuit. We had two of them, 1,500 VA each. Now, at this point, here's where we start to differ from the way we did it with the standard method. Now that we're under the optional method, we're just compiling this information because we're going to be able to apply a larger demand factor. The first 10,000 is going to be at 100% and the remainder is going to be at 40%. But right now, all we did was add these loads up and bring them together. So you're going to remember that. Also, remember, you cannot use the optional method unless the, dealing with a 100 amps or greater service or feeder application. If it's less than that, then you're going to have to use the standard method in part three. Make sense? All right. Also, as you saw earlier, what it said about the neutral or grounded conductor, it says that you have to do it in 220.61. And to be honest with you, that's why you need to know the standard calculation. Okay? So hopefully you go watch that series as well. All right, so let's kind of do some math here. We've got the 5,565. We got the 6,000 VA for our small appliance. We got the 3,000 for our laundry. Add them all up, 5,565, 6,000, 3,000. That's 14,565. Now, like I said, unlike the standard method where you get to apply some demand factors in 220.42, or if you're in the 2023 code now, that's 220.45. Rather than do that, we're just going to write these numbers down. So that 14,565, we're going to use that in a later. So just write that down on a piece of paper and we would move on to the next step.
And that's going to be the next video. But before we do that, I want to show you how that would look on the form. So on our form, this is kind of what it would look like is right here in, let me make sure I get my mouse going here for you. So right here is where you go put your square footage. And so it's three times the square footage. That goes right there. And remember, 1500 VA for the small appliance brand circuits. Well, all you got to do is write down the number here. And we remind you that it's a minimum of two. And you put that value here. And then the laundry, again, we say 1500 VA per laundry circuit, minimum of one. You put that right here. Okay. Notice how we also have the code rules here. That's why you use these forms. It slowly teaches you the steps you need to remember. And once you do it, it becomes habitual. You actually start to know how you're supposed to move through all of this. Okay. So it really, and you notice that these are hashed out like this. That's to tell you that it's going to be used in an overall calculation later, that that's not the end means for everything. That's just temporarily the values you're going to write down right now. Okay. Pretty cool little form. Uh, make sure you get it when you're doing these. All right. So take it back to me and let's kind of do a quick little summary of this step one. You're still going to do everything you did before. You're going to get three VA per square foot. Remember, if you have multiple floors, they use the outside dimensions of each floor and you're going to add them together and they get three VA per square foot. Um, you got to also remember that when it comes to the uh, small appliance, then that's 1500 VA per small appliance. When it comes to the laundry, it's 1500 VA per laundry circuit. Remember that. Okay. Um, and you're going to take it and you're going to come up with all these values and you're not going to apply any demand factor yet. You're just coming up with the numbers and we're going to use that in the next step. Okay. So hopefully you got something out of that part. That's the very first step in compiling the information. It's pretty simple, wasn't it? All right. We'll see you in the next video.